Ford's been on a bit of a roll lately. We have recently tested the Focus ST and loved it. We love the new Puma compact crossover, which is without question the best car in its class. And now we've got this, the new Cougar. Now the Cougar has always been a reasonably decent car, usually better to drive than most of its SUV rivals, not always the best looking, not always the most exciting car around. But now comes this third generation model and it's well, it is getting a little bit exciting, actually. I mean, look at the styling, first of all. Now, it must be said, this is in ST line trim. I'll helpfully point to that there, which does give you a nice chunky body kit, and nice alloy wheels and things. And that really, really helps. Without that, this pu uh, Cougar can look a little bit on the bland side. And this lucid red paintwork really helps as well. But if you come around the front here, there's definite tones of Aston Martin's DBX SUV about this. It's actually really quite handsome. Incidentally, we have spoken to the guys at Aston about Ford nicking their styling and their response was, well, Ford's got bigger lawyers than us. What's more important than any of that though is what's under the skin because this is not only the first Cougar plug-in hybrid, it's Ford's first plug-in hybrid in the European market. And it's a very, very good plug-in hybrid. Under the bonnet here is a 2.5 litre four-cylinder petrol engine running on the Atkinson fuel cycle. Now, without getting into the sciencey bit, that just means it opens its valves slightly differently to a conventional engine, making it more economical, but making it less powerful for a given size. So that's where the electric motor and the 14.4 kilowatt hour battery step in to help propel the car further forward faster a bit more often. What it also does, of course, is it allows you to plug in, charge up that battery and run around on pure electric power. And it will do so for quite a long while. Ford says its claim is that it will do 56 kilometers on a full charge of the battery. So we've been getting around 40, 45 kilometers. Some of our colleagues have been getting even more than that. There is definitely useful range on electric power in this car. But what's more important than that? is that when the two combine, when petrol and electric work together, and when you've run the battery down flat from spinning around town in it, this is still a decently economical car. The first time I drove this car, I took it straight out from Ford HQ, straight out onto the motorway, did a long, long motorway run in it. And normally that's the worst possible thing you can do with a plug-in hybrid. That's what's gonna put a, a plug-in hybrid on its back foot, make it really thirsty. But this was okay. Around six, 6.3 liters per 100 kilometers, that's 45-ish miles per gallon, even knocking up on towards the door of 50 miles per gallon. If you drive it with a modicum of decorum, this is a very economical all-round car, not just when you've kept it plugged in and kept running it in electric mode. So that's really good. I have to say the Cougar continues its impressiveness here on the inside. Now, if you look at the dash and all of the interior appointments, you'll notice a lot of them come from the Ford Focus. That's both a good and a bad thing. It's good in that it's a nice familiar environment. Everything is nicely laid out. Everything looks reasonably good. It's not so great in that some of the plastics are a little bit scratchy and hard and cheap looking, which is a bit of a shame. But on the good side, Everything's bolted together really, really well. This does feel like a quality piece, even if it doesn't always look like it at first glance. There are other strengths in here. There's this touchscreen. This is the Sync 3 touchscreen. Now, it's an 8-inch screen, not the biggest in its class, but it is simple to use. And crucially, Ford has kept things like physical controls for the volume, for the tuning, for the heating, the ventilation and air conditioning, which makes such a big difference. When you're actually driving, you don't want to be taking your eyes off the road and fiddling around with the touchscreen. You can just put your hand down here, find the physical button you need and carry on safely. It's much, much better than what some of its competitors are up to. We also get a very nice 12.3 inch digital instrument panel lifted mostly from the Ford Puma. And that's nice too. It's nice and bright, it's clear, it's attractive, and you can flip it between different views by pushing this button to select normal, or eco or sport or slippery road mode so that's good too it's also very roomy now this is an st line spec car as we said so we get these nice seats with alcantara inserts and red stitching more importantly there's plenty of room there's good space good leg room good headroom and a decent boot slung out the back too so it is a practical family wagon at its heart which is really what you want an suv to be and as you can see, the space here in the back is very, very decent. I mean, I'm of the, shall we say, more husky build, but I've got plenty of legroom, my feet fit under the front seat, plenty of headroom too, and it's a comfy seat. I can see out nicely. This is a good, solid family SUV. There's plenty of space back here, even if you've got lanky teenagers at home. I don't think they're going to complain too much about being in the back. Well, no more than they usually complain anyway. 
So how does the Cougar drive? Well, the answer is very, very well, which you'd expect of a modern Ford. It does have that lovely, smooth, beautifully weighted steering feel that you normally get from Fords. Although it has to be said, there's not a huge amount of feedback coming back from the front wheels. But then again, that's something else that you expect these days. Now that does come with the health and safety warning that you do have to watch for the additional weight of the batteries and the electric motor because that extra mass, that extra heft, that extra inertia does mean that this Cougar rolls a bit more in corners and you can feel it trying to pull wide of the apex of a tight corner. So you do have to remember that there is a chunk of weight, even if it is mounted relatively down low, that will affect the car's handling. Overall though, it's really generally very good. It's quite enjoyable, it's good fun. When you put it in sport mode, it will cling on, it does grip, and it does get down to the apex as long as you're careful with your cornering lines. The ride quality is also very, very decent. It controls the weight, the extra weight quite well. It's always supple and well damped, if occasionally a little bit firm. And sometimes, particularly in electric mode, you can hear that that suspension is just a little bit too noisy. Now the engine does do the hybrid CVT moan when you accelerate, but it's reasonably well refined. It's reasonably well subdued. Um, and there's enough torque in the system to ensure that you get up to your cruising speed pretty quickly. Total power from the engine is 225 horsepower. Uh, Ford doesn't quote a maximum torque figure, much like its rival Toyota, but the engine produces 200 newton meters, and we reckon the electric motor is chucking in at least an extra 150 on top of that, certainly judging from the way the Cougar accelerates, which is reasonably briskly. So as an all-round performer then, the Cougar is very, very impressive. It's extremely pleasant to scoot around town on just the battery power. That puts a definite smug feeling in the back of your brain. Um, but it's also good up here on the mountain roads. It's enjoyable, it's reasonably precise, it's good fun. So Ford, I think, once again, has produced a heck of a good car as an all-round performer, as something that does a lot of duties, but does them pretty well. So, we come to the best part, which is the price tag. This ST line, which is reasonably well specced, I mean, it could do with a few other toys on it perhaps, but it's not bad but it sits under me right now at just over 38,000 euro. That compares extremely well with the likes of Toyota's RAV4 and Honda's uh, CRV hybrid, which are this car's two biggest rivals, but neither of those are plug-ins. Neither of those will give you the electric range on a full charge that this can do. Neither of them will give you completely zero emissions running around town or on short journeys. And yet they're in and around the same price and in and around the same spec. So I think Ford has pulled off a pretty good trick here. It's taken the Cougar name, but applied it to a much better car than it's ever done before. Better looking, certainly as good to drive as it was before. Better interior, and this plug-in hybrid powertrain is extremely impressive. Ford is definitely on a roll, and this Cougar just proves the point. Well, as always, we've got a lot more content for you to check out on the CompleteCar.ie YouTube channel, so don't forget to click like, click subscribe, and enjoy all the rest of our videos. Thanks for watching.